Hello, this is Matt with Physics Junkie, and today I'm going to be starting a career mode in Alpha Centauri in the mod Centauri Dreams. Now in this mod I'm going to be playing heavily modded, no reverts, and I will link all of that in the description, but let's take a look at the planets. This is Elcano. It's a Mars-like planet, a very th a fairly thick atmosphere, and slightly lower than Earth gravity. It gets its name from Juan Sebastian Elcano, who was a Spanish explorer who completed the first circumnavigation of the Earth after taking command of the vessel from Magellan. This little moon hiding in the dark here is called Hawking, and I guess you can name him who that's named after. Let's see if we can get into the light. It's just a tiny moon, nothing really special. It's supposed to be a captured asteroid. And I think it's a, a nice little place to play around. So that being said, let's go ahead and get to building the first rocket. And I am playing with the Unmanned Before Man mod to make things a little bit more complex and a little bit more sane. And this first launch is always, of course, going to be just a science run. So let's see how high I can get and just grab a couple of experiments while I'm up there. The terrain here is one of the main reasons I created the mod. In real solar system, you see that because it's trying to aim for realism, it's almost totally flat and has no real surface features. But being able to get away from knowing what the planet around Alpha Centauri would look like, I am able to be more open with my interpretation of the planets, allowing me to put in hills, valleys, mountains, whereas in uh, real solar system, we might not get to do that. So just collecting a few science samples here. Not really anything of super value, and of course I haven't unlocked parachutes yet, so we're going right back to the ground. And, God willing, we're not going to smash back on the launch pad and make me pay for that on my second launch. So I went ahead and got a few uh, things done in the background there. Went and spent all that science on some lovely upgrades. Now we're going to try to complete that first contract and break through the atmosphere, which on this planet is about 140 kilometers up. Can't remember if I changed it to 150 before I sent it out or not. But I've kind of been bouncing around on that because a thicker uh, gravity well means the atmosphere would stick close to the planet, which means since Elcano has a uh, thinner gravity well, it would have a larger scale height. I guess. So let's see how we can do. Just got a simple, well, I guess a mildly complex solid rocket booster. And then the second stage there is a tiny, tiny, tiny liquid fueled booster with a ton of signs on it. And looking at Mech Jeb, it says I should have plenty to get up and down. And still no parachutes, so once again, we're going to hit something. And it's not going to be pretty, but maybe we'll get off the signs before we hit the ground. And I really don't know how X Science works. I'm thinking I'm missing the mod, it's X-Science Here and Now, which is the one I, you see in all the videos. This is just one that has a list, so I'm going to have to go download that in between recording sessions, but it looks like a fun mod to play around with. And there are no uh, science definitions yet, I tried to compile them for this update, but um, it just ended up yelling at me, throwing a bunch of errors, so I decided I'll wait on that. But I've got some good ones stored up, and you'll get to see them soon.
Now I'm realizing at this point that I should have gone ahead and warped until daytime. But hindsight is 2020. I'll get it on the next launch, I promise. And we've successfully broken through the atmosphere and gotten our, all of our uh, contracts fulfilled. So let's grab some science. And half of the stuff I brought up here doesn't do anything. So next launch, I'll pull that stuff off and I guess it's for other purposes. I didn't really read too much. I just wanted to build them really quickly. <laughs> and it's all about learning. So now we're gonna fall really quickly back to the ground and you can watch this fast forwarded because, well, we've all seen science collecting missions. We don't need to see them again. I'm going slow enough that we might have something to survive here. Maybe. Now, since the atmosphere is thicker and the gravity is lower, we should be able to survive on most. Never mind. Once again, I went and upgraded all my science, got a few extra things going on, and now we're gonna go for our first orbital vessel. Without upgrading anything, that might be difficult. It takes about 9,000 meters a second to get up to orbit, and I'm not sure I can do that under 30 parts or under 18 tons. It's kind of pushing the limits of uh, science. I opt to go with a pretty uh, stock looking vehicle. I am running Smurf by the way, which is a uh, rebalancing mod, which allows you to build rockets as if they were the real world size. So there's no issues of, um, there's no issues of, you know, having a very low ISP or a very high ISP compared to what you should in the real world. Back when I first started playing KSP in Real Solar System, I didn't know that ISPs were different in the real world. So my brother and I ended up building a gigantic monstrosity to land on the moon. One way trip, no returns, with stock parts. It's probably the craziest thing I've ever built and I would not do it again. So let's go ahead and uh, warp till daytime so we can go ahead and see those stars. The clouds are courtesy of Eve. I, uh, I finished coding them about an hour before I uploaded the mod. And all that's required to install them is to download environmental visual overhaul. Look at those. Beautiful. Sorry, it's environmental visual enhancements. Get my names confused. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at what this planet looks like from orbit. Now, gravity turns on this planet are going to be a little difficult. Because the atmosphere is so thick down low, you have to go up high and get out of that thick atmosphere before heading over. Before pitching over like I am now. And I have to play with it a little because I'm not quite sure what the right gravity turn would be. So if you're playing, you're going to have to figure it out for yourself too. It's, it's very different than Earth or Kerbin where it's simply go up to about 100 meters a second and turn slightly and let it fall over. This one you have to go up farther, um, but keep your speed lower so you don't hit max Q and end up just running out of delta V because you've hit maximum velocity you can go. So, and it looks like I've buggered this one. I don't think it's gonna be a good gravity turn because I wasted so much delta V going straight up when I could have been adding lateral velocity. And it looks like I also bought, brought a lot of uh, dead experiments that don't do me any good. But we will get a chance to get some contracts, maybe some science out of this, and take a look at the clouds. Just a hint of red there to kind of, I don't know, give it some color. There is there is oxygen on this planet, but not in the way we would like. It's ozone. So definitely not breathable but it can be used to power jet engines, which is an interesting thing that took me many Google searches and many Wikipedia articles to discover. 
it is possible, and they actually might run better in Ozone with a few modifications. And that's why I'd, I say the future humans in my playthrough end up on this planet is because it looks like it might be habitable and it looks like there might be life, but in reality it's just a really dense ozone planet without anything living on it. As you can see, it's clearly a desert. I mean, maybe there's some corner here that has life, but it's not likely and we haven't found it yet. So it looks like I'm gonna be running out of Delta V. I've got about a minute and a half till Apple apps and this doesn't have enough thrust to get me there. It should, it does have an almost enough delta V, almost, but not quite. So if we had gone up a little higher, or possibly turned over earlier, we might have made it, but it doesn't look promising right now. So I'm just gonna let it fire, collect what science I can, and see what we can do. Um, we should have enough science or enough money to upgrade the launch pad to get a few more parts on here. And maybe that'll let us, maybe that'll let us hit orbit this episode. I'm going to see if I can collect some science from the upper atmosphere here as we come down. Doesn't look like anything new shows up over here. Nothing biome related anyway. I think I said it so you have to be like 5 kilometers up to get anything biome related. To prevent that first space station going into orbit and you know you just wait and warp around and grab every bit of science you can and bring it down. So I want a little bit of a difficulty curve here. I mean like there isn't enough of one already. Still no new science. It looks like we're going to go in for a rough landing here. Maybe we'll just burn up. I don't have deadly re-entry. It seemed to have disappeared in the forum problem they were having yesterday. So, I might upgrade to that later. But for now, I'm just going to stick with stock settings. Which apparently lets me survive this. If you look over there, I think you can just make out Proxima. It follows about 45 to 60 degrees behind the other two stars. And it really doesn't move throughout the years, since it's in like a, oh, thousand year orbit. It's ridiculous. Okay, so now just gonna make a couple of changes, add some SRBs, Remove some of that science that didn't do anything, and see if we can make orbit then. It's a bit of a game to play around with it, because I'm still dealing with the 30 part limit, but I do have the ability to go up to a ridiculous amount of tons. I think it's something like 300 for the first upgrade. So we're going to be Elcano 4, and we're going to go for it. seems to be going well here. Now again, this launch is going to be at two, three times regular speed, just to get us there faster. We've all seen a launch before, and these real-scale solar system mods, they take a long time to get into orbit, something like 10 to 15 minutes each launch. So I probably will not be running them at normal speed at any point unless it's on another body that's more interesting, or something interesting happens. But for now, we're going to run them fast. And we know better now, and we would certainly know better by the time we're in Alpha Centauri exploring. But when the first satellite was launched, 
around Earth, you know, Sputnik, we all learned about it in school, or some of you might have lived it, um, some newspapers called it the, f the second moon. Now, that's a little bit of hyperbole. It came down rather quickly to be considered a moon. And the, uh, ma there was a few orders of magnitude difference between Sputnik and our moon. And this one is probably actually more sophisticated than Sputnik because it actually has an experiment on board, whereas Sputnik was merely a bowling ball with a radio in it. But it served the job. It started the space race, or I guess it was kind of a middle ground in the space race. And it caused us to go after the moon to try to beat the Russians. Now, I should have plenty of Delta V to get to the moon, I get to orbit on this. Um, it said at launch I had 11,000, and we need about 9 to get to orbit, minus some for some vacuum losses. losses. Uh, we should be good to go. We might even be able to push our orbit out and see if we can collect some additional science from way up top. So I'm throttling down because I don't know if it was a mod I downloaded or a setting I changed, but I have high g-force part failures on my rocket parts, because it's a little ooh, crazy to think you can pull 10 G's and have a totally working spacecraft that wasn't designed for it. So now I'm on the final stage and we're definitely getting into orbit, unless we have some kind of failure. Looks like about 400 kilometers to go, and I should have plenty to get there. Now since I'm higher up, I don't need as much delta V to get into orbit, it's just a matter of waiting now. I have to say, I am quite proud of how this looks from orbit. The clouds, courtesy of Eve, look great. The textures on like the fourth or fifth iteration at this point look great. And I'm just happy that, you know, it all is working and there's people that enjoy playing it. So with that being said, we've got our first satellite in orbit here. Until next time, let's let this orbit take us out.